Greetings from around the rim. I'm Jay. And I'm Colin. And this is Star Wars Conversations. Hey, how you doing, Colin? Hey, I'm good, dude. Not too bad. You must be quite excited today. Yeah, yeah. Today is the day that the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta was released to those yeah. people that pre-ordered it. Yeah. Um, and uh, we will be doing this podcast, which is going to be our standard audio edition. And then we're going to get on, and me and Colin are going to play a bit of the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta. And um, I'm going to edit together a video version of it so that you can all enjoy that on our YouTube channel yeah. later on. And maybe somehow stick it onto the podcast a bit. I don't know how it's all going to work. <laughs> that would but probably sound really boring. <laughs> it might not, though. It might sound brilliant. So we'll find <laughs> out soon. <laughs> <laughs> but if not, go check the YouTube channel because uh, it's definitely be on there. So, um, yeah, wicked. Um, so just uh, before we get in round, well, I guess this is uh, round the room. So let's uh, go round the room. Um, so... First bit of news around this um, Star Star Wars beta, I guess uh, Battlefront Two beta. Yeah, it's a bit of a balls up this morning. I tell you that. Ah, what happened? Because I, I obviously I was at work all day and um, I set it off to download. So when I came home, um, it was what, fifteen gigs. So I downloaded that. Um, well, obviously I was at work as well. So my yes. friend told me um, <laughs> <laughs> that um, they ordered it from. Amazon, <laughs> Amazon, um, and obviously received a code all uh-huh. in time as, as 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 per the instructions, and they redeemed that code. Yeah, and then because uh, it was going live at uh, eight a.m. UTC time, I don't know what okay. that stands for, Universal Time or something like that, um, and that was equivalent of a uh, no of nine a.m. here and British Summer Time. Okay. Um, and um, basically, I try put well, uh, that person tried putting that code in, and um, it didn't work. Basically, um, it just said uh, you haven't bought. Uh, uh, it accepted accepted the code, but then when you tried to go to where the beta was to download on the PSN, um, it just said, "Oh, you haven't bought the PSN," because obviously it didn't recognise the fact that that code means you bought the game. So. It, it didn't get rectified until about half twelve, I think. Ah, okay. So yeah, that, that's a bit if anyone had t- took the day off to uh, play the game, um, would have wasted half a day. Oh, they, they'd have been very disappointed. They would have been. But um, I mean, after that, you, you got it installed on your machine when you came home from work, didn't you? And, yeah, I uh, did. Yeah, and apparently, like I say, almost after half twelve, my friend managed to get it on there. But uh, that was good for them. Yeah, good for them. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, but obviously didn't play it because they were busy at work as well, oh. um, and they just wanted to make sure it's downloaded. That's all they wanted to do. They didn't want to play it. Oh right, okay. Until they finished their work. But it took but, me what seventeen minutes to download it. I think. Ah, uh, well, it took me uh, eighty-five minutes to download oh. it. So I've obviously got crap poor <laughs> band. So. Um... <laughs> So have you had a go on it then? Have you played? I've had a go on it. I've played all the modes. So basically, okay. the modes that are available at the moment are multiplayer modes. There is Galactic Assault, mm-hmm. uh, and that is on Feed, um, the capital city of Naboo. Yeah. Um, and you can play as clones or um, droids. And um, basically, it's similar to Walker Assault. Uh, in that um, the the droid army has got one of our big um, things, MV something, <laughs> okay, tank, big thing. vehicle, big vehicle. It's attacking the palace, um, and the um, the the Republic have got to stop the tank, and then basically guard stop the um, palace from being taken over. Um, and sort of the main differences are obviously first of all that you're playing in that era which is nice uh, I actually yeah. do love playing uh, droids and clones I love it 
uh, been looking forward to it since the original Battlefront. So uh, that's really cool. Rada, rada. And um, like I say, um, we've got a class system. So you've got different types of inf- different types of infantry. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, different so you, gameplay. You can be a, a standard type soldier, heavy weapons specialist, which is snipers and stuff like that. And you can be officers, right? Yeah. And the officer's got the cool little turret thing you can just drop somewhere, which is quite cool. I like. ah, okay. So, so far, I like playing officer and heavy gunner. Yeah, I tried heavy. Uh, I tried the heavy in this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, um, so, that's quite a cool game. There's also um, Strike, which is a new mode, which is more of an objective based game, smaller numbers. I think it's eight aside. No, oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah, um, so you can play that. That's on uh, Maz's Castle. Okay. And it's the um, first order, new era. Yeah, first order era. Okay. Um, cool. And it's basically pick up something, get it to the other side, kind of game, um, which is okay. Um, I, I haven't really played that one that much, but uh, what I can't work out, and I couldn't work this out on um, the other game, he was how to pick things up. There's a no. few boxes where you can pick stuff up. I didn't know how to pick it up. So yeah, it doesn't really act. give you any hints as to what to press. There's no, there's no games. tutorial or hints no. on this beta, so you kind of, <laughs> which you I definitely need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I must say, when I put the um, ground assault one on, I've only played the um, the feed one, and firstly. I wasn't happy to play a battle droid. I didn't really get a choice. It made me be a battle droid, and I was like, I don't want to be a battle droid, so this sucks. Yeah, but you have to play. I hate playing first-person shooters, so it took me a while to work out how to change into third-person. Oh, but man. I did that. <laughs> I did get it into third-person. I was standing there for ages going, I, I can't play this, and then I, I worked out where it was on the menu, and I did that. Yeah, um, yeah go on. Anyway, you were saying about the uh, the other... Yeah, it's a strike. Types. That's okay. Um and then the, the the last multiplayer mode that's available is Starfighter Assault, which is uh, space battles, basically. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I discovered I was extremely bad at this. I mean, I'm rubbish at all games, but this I am terrible at. This um, is so favorite. we will play that in a bit, and I'm, you can see how rubbish I am. I really like that bit. That, for me, was the bit that I was like... Because I, I, I didn't really like the ground assault bit. I started playing it and I was just like, oh god, I don't know if I want to buy this game. And then um, I tried out the Space Battle bit and I quite enjoyed that. So I was like, okay, this is cool. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about um, a, a different mode. I can't remember what it was called. It's like an arcade mode or something. And I was playing as Darth Maul and I had yeah. 20 seconds to kill a bunch of soldiers. And I was just like, okay, I'll never play this version again. Um, yeah, so. So talking about that, so the arcade mm. mode, um, it's just uh, it's just giving me a little tip of what's available on that. Um, and the only two modes you can play on that is one called Wipe Them Out, which is the one you're talking about, Jay, where right. you're either Darth Maul or Superstar, not Superstar, what are they called? Super, Super Droid. Super Battle Droid. Super Battle Droid. Yeah. And you've got initially 20 seconds from when you first shoot the, the, the army to, to wipe out, I think it's 25... Uh, clones, right. but every time you shoot one, you get a few more seconds added. So you, the trick is to keep shooting regularly to, to beat them. Now right. I can't do it as a super battle droid. I've, I've tried it about six times, but I can. I've done it as Darth Maul, which is pretty cool. Right. Um, and then the other arcade mode, which is available, is a pretty simple. It's basically a stripped down version of Galactic Assault. It's literally your uh, your droids or your clones, but in this version you can only be droids. You can't yeah. play it from the other side, uh. and you've basically got to assault the um, the palace. And you've got to, and it's basically a, it's a it's a simple like like the old instant action game it used to be in the old Battlefront. Mm-hmm. You you've got to kill. It's the first team to kill the f- fifty of the others, which is. A massive improvement on Battlefront One because in that game you used to have to kill people then collect the tokens for it to count, and that used to piss me off because I couldn't do it because I kill people then I'd have to go and try and get the tokens and then I get killed. Whereas at least this you can just kill people and that counts. That's right. brilliant. That's better. So already I'm happier with the game. Uh, it's definitely slightly different and it's thrown me off a little bit after playing the old game for two years. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's about the only game I've been playing so. Um, yeah, it's uh, 
it's early days yet. I've only had a couple of hours on it, so. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I've played it for probably about twenty-five minutes. Um, the old Battlefront, the, the first one. The I used to love the Battlefront original two. The original ones, I love Battlefront. On I, like, I liked two. one. I really liked two. Then the the first one that came out on PS4, I um, I played it for sort of like three weeks, and I was just like I'm bored. So when I put on the feed assault, the ground attack bit, mm-hmm. my initial feeling was, oh god, it's that game again, and I yeah. was just, and it made me go, oh man, I'm not sure about this. But I started to have quite a bit of fun in the the um, space battle. Um, mm. That that seemed quite good. Um, I don't know how much that would hold my attention though as a long-term game the thing is for me it, it, it's a very it's a very um pick up the game and get just straight into like shooting and that's what it is it's just a straight up shooter yeah. and that's generally not my type of game so that makes it instantly yeah. i'm gonna be like uh, i'm not sure about this but i must say the space battles i did like how the ships were a little bit different now. I couldn't work out how to shoot um, photon torpedoes, so I probably will work some of that out. But I did yeah. like that you could fly in between the ships, and I, I flew into like one of the docking bays and flew out the other side, and that was quite cool. And at one point, somebody was obviously the Millennium Falcon, and I was flying alongside them inside a ship and like just going over all the bits mm. of machinery. You know, and that was pretty cool. Um, I had a good little. Kill, uh, by the way, I'm I'm crap at this game, but I had a good little um, kill streak with I uh, shot three tie fighter players in a row, and cool. I was like, yeah, that's the best I've done, and I think that's probably the best I will do. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but I cool. mean, I, I think actually, if you've played Battlefront One, it's probably a bit of a it actually is a bit of a stumbling point because actually you keep looking for the buttons that you used to play that aren't there anymore. Mm. <laughs> and I know that that's what kept throwing me off, particularly on Starfighter Assault, because there were a couple of, like there, there was a, a roll and a, and a, like how you say, like how you used to shoot the proton torpedoes and stuff where that's not there anymore. And it's more, much more manual flying game. There's yeah. no press a button and you'll roll out the way, mm. but only have to power it up. Now it's all, you can do it any time, but you've got to physically know how to fly. Which <laughs> I, I was cool with that. The only thing, and, and you might know about this, but so all the different um, ships, let's take mm. the, the uh, Rebels, for example, you have an X-Wing, an A-Wing, and a Y-Wing, and they all handle a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I found a little bit annoying was the first game of uh, the Galactic Assault. Was it Galactic Assault, the, the area one? What's it called? Starfight. Star- Star- Starfighter Assault. Starfighter Assault. The first uh, game of that I played, um, I was an Imperial. So I had the TIE mm-hmm. Fires, the Intercept, and Bomber. Um, so that was quite cool. Then it did another round, and now I was an X-Wing. So I was like, okay, yeah. so I was Rebels. And it always alternates. But then it did another round, and I was X-Wings again. And I was like, when do I get to be TIE Fighters again? Oh, do it? Um, really? Yeah. So I end up being stuck as rebels, and it's like, well, I want to have a go on some of the other ships, man. This ain't fair. Um, although I must say, both times I played as rebels, um, our team did much better than when we were Imperials. We just lost. So uh, I mean, it might might just be the beta, but I mean, I, I know on Battlefront One, it was very much alternate. You know, goody baddy, goody baddy. Right, right. But yeah, so, I mean, I, I did find that quite good. I thought that the flying on that was good. The graphics are great. I mean, the graphics look absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it looks as amazing. They did on the first one as well. That was a beautiful looking game. Um, just by sort of looking through the menus, because not everything's open to you, but you can look yeah. through the menus. And it does mm. seem like there's a lot more content there that people can be able to just get straight in and start playing with. So, you know, all those things are, are good. Um, there's a lot, yeah. there's a lot um, that they've improved for sure. I think the long, long longevity of this game, in particular around the Starfighter Soul, like you're saying, is whether or not they actually make each map slightly different mm. in terms of what you actually do in the game, not mm. just it. Because that was the the main flaw with the Fighter Assault on Battlefront One. Yeah, was it might be a slightly different background, but the game was exactly the same no matter where it was. Yeah. And it was boring. I mean, that was such a boring game. Actually, I must say, there was one thing that I did really like on Fire Assault. On the old version, I found myself going out of bounds very easily. And on this one, I didn't. On this no. one, I flew around a lot. And at no mm. point did it say you're going away from the battlefield, which was pretty cool. I was happy about that. And in mm. fact, there were points where 
there were um, enemy fighters and it would be it would say out of range and they were like yeah. really far away from me so that was cool because it means that they've obviously opened that up a bit made a bigger battleground for you so that kind of stuff's the kind of improvements that people wanted because i think those things annoyed people that used to annoy me you know i'm trying to fly my ship all i'm trying to do is you know do yeah. a loop and I, I turn around and it's like you're out of bounds like come on man i bet uh, anywhere yeah i guess you, the most the biggest difference really on this and on battlefront one is the loot crate system mm. uh and the way they've changed star cards and and uh enhancing your weapons and your abilities and stuff like that it's now all based on getting a crate right and winning so basically you earn points throughout the game uh if you complete challenges there's there's some challenges in the, in the beta as well to do like oh, okay. and then you win crates and then you get star cards in the crates Right. Or you get components to to help you build whatever you need to build, and which and customize stuff, which to me is getting a bit complicated. It's get, I mean, for a non gamer, I know I know there's lots of games that do that sort of type of stuff, but it started now. I'm thinking, I don't want to have to customize my gun, my character, my well, because every single type of game of of um class has got different customizations each hero has got different customizations but it's going to confuse the no, these are things that players want you know and and to be able to modify your guns and you know give yourself a bit of advantage these are always things people will, will want out again they'll always give you that and the the biggest annoyances people had on the first one is that they have to pay for anything like that but yeah. in this one at least they're letting you earn it i mean if you don't want to you don't have to like no, and, and you could definitely buy it um so yeah. you could buy you can use your credits that you've earned and it looks like there's a there's going to be the facility for you to pay with real money to buy more credits so you can buy more stuff if you want it mm. Mm. so, so uh, yeah well you know anyway, as we said we will have a little uh, game on it a bit later so um if anyone wants to check us out being really really bad um you can <laughs> <laughs> and I promise yeah. you, we will be bad. Well, I know I will be bad, so... Um... I will be very bad. <laughs> if we're playing Starfighter Assault... I'll, I'll be I, bad on both of them, so... Don't I don't think I've, I think I've killed one thing on it so oh, far. Okay. <laughs> I've had a few kills on that. Um, but on, on the uh, the one where you're on land, Galactic Assault, I couldn't... Like, I was running around at one point and there was no one around. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> Again, it's, it's a like, big space. Like, yeah, it's a big space. Uh, these these maps are big. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I guess, guess when they're fully when they're filled up on a normal server, it'll be yeah. busy. But on the beta server, it's a bit quiet. And also, obviously, it's late now. It's it's half eleven here in England, so um, it's not uh, late this... in the US, is it? No, uh, true, true. Yeah, they'll be they'll be on there. Be there. There might be point. some our compadres on there. You never yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, so, Jim's added me on PSN. So yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you might be on there. Hey, um, Jim. So, anyway, shall we just get through the other bits of uh, news around the rim and then um, yeah, and man. we'll get on the game? Mm. Okay. So, there's a, a new character in The Last Jedi, um, leader of the A Wing Squadron, Tally Lintra, now confirmed by Ryan Johnson to be played by British actress Hermione Cornfield. Um, Hermione is known for roles in movies such as Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Triple X Return of Xander Cage, King Arthur Legend of the Sword and Mr. Holmes. Uh, Tally Lintra's role in the movie is described as leading the A-Wings, aiding Poe Dameron's fighters to protect the resistance evacuation um, of their HQ on the planet Dakar. Um, which is uh, where the Re Resistance HQ is, um, and launching assaults on a First Order Dreadnought, which is the big Star Destroyer, apparently it's going to be the biggest one we've seen, with a big gun underneath it. So that information I got off StarWarsNewsNet.com. Um, the character was first described in the new Journey to the Last Jedi A-Wing Deluxe book, which comes with a laser-cut 3D wooden A-Wing fighter model kit. Wouldn't wow. you just love that? Yeah. yeah. So, what do you make of this? So we've got a new character. Um, she's the leader of the squadron. She could be just a bit part, uh, which I'm going to guess that she is. But they've really made an effort to focus on her in this book, and um, they've talked about her being in the uh, in the movie as well. She's a leader of a group transformed from the norm by this nuclear goop. <laughs> 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 I 
And if, if anyone knows what he's talking about, which I'm sure plenty of you do, um, you're children of the 80s. Um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I am not... Well, this is the first I've heard of her, but... Uh, yeah. First of all, I don't know who that actress is, but I'm assuming she's not very old because she's called Hermione, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So she's a child she, of Harry Potter, was, possibly. She was born in 1993. Oh, well, that was before Harry Potter, wasn't it? Yeah. Only um, just so. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, she looks quite cool. She's not a bad-looking girl. Um, oh. And she's going to be assisting Poe Dameron. And uh, I think the key is that there's a big First Order Dreadnought there as well. Which will well, be pretty cool. It's gonna, they're going to go on a bombing run to try and take it out with like Y wings and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> no, no further thoughts. Um, have you got a picture of her? Yeah, yeah. Let me see now. You want to see? Yeah. Do you want to? Okay, well, I'll I'll send you. Um, a I'll send you a picture there of her. Which... I will do an amazing summary of what this character's story arc just by one look at one picture, Jay. Okay. For you, I well, will do this here's with the, my informed Star Wars insider knowledge. I will be able to tell you. I've got a picture of the Sifts. Um, Hermione. Herm oh, Hermione. Oh, there she is. Oh, right. Well, she's going to die. You think she's going to die? <laughs> Why do you think she's going to die? No. Yeah, um, I don't like a helmet. First of all. It's a bit bulbous, isn't it? It's a massive helmet for her little head. <laughs> um, she looks really young in that picture. She, she looks leader. like actual Hermione in that picture. <laughs> she does, right? Hermione. <laughs> yeah, I call Hermione. Um, but, and if you scroll down further, you see a picture of her in her, her, her A-wing, which has like blue markings on it. Way and blue. I'm looking at her picture in a black dress. That's a good picture. <laughs> Oh my god, in that picture of the Halloween, she doesn't look like, she looks like a, like a young Anakin. Yeah. Don't she? Yeah. Wowee! <laughs> um, that's a cool picture, though. Yeah, you can see uh, the planet in the background there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if, if uh, listeners want to check this out, it's on stolesnewsnet.com. Um, it's the second article down at the moment. I reckon she'd be all right. Um, do you reckon, she's not going to be a love interest for Poe. She's too young, isn't she? Yeah, I think she'll be a bit young for Poe. Well, I don't um, know, she's 24. Well, how old's Poe? He's about 500, isn't he? <laughs> He's like about our age. That's old, isn't it? Then? Is it? Are we old? Too old for 24 year olds, mate. Oh, damn. Really? Yeah, I'm lucky. Oh. <laughs> so, um. Unlucky 24 year olds, stay yeah. away. Yeah, they're so, <laughs> they're so unlucky. <laughs> 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 right, so anyway. There's another little thing came out. I'm not going to actually say too much about this, and I would encourage people to go and check it out on StarWarsNewsNet.com if they want to. Um, but there's a slightly spoilery thing. There's a, a new edition of the Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know book, and it reveals some spoilery information, um, such as uh, s stuff about Snoke's force powers and what type oh, of force yeah. powers he has. Mm. And a bit mm. of information about Praetorian Guards, about Kylo Ren, Chewie and the Porgs. That's his new band, by the way. Um, mm. And also, how long Luke has been on Achito. I've actually read through all this, so I, I've, I've read it all. Can but... you tell us how long he's been on Achito? Surely that's not a matter of Okay, well, you? they reckon he's been on Achito for about four years. No, oh. sorry, two years. Two years? Yeah, two years. Oh, interesting. So, so then, so what they then said is, okay, so Bloodline suggests that um, six years ago he... Disappeared. He was uh, training Kylo Ren or Ben Solo. So they're sort of suggesting maybe in the last four years is when everything happened with him betraying Luke. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh that is interesting. I mean, because um, I've got to say, Kylo doesn't seem like he's been in that position for that long, does it? No. In Force Awakens. No, he seems a bit um, of a newbie to it, doesn't he? Mm. What about um, Snoke? Would you like to know anything about his powers? <sighs> it's spoilery. I've just said it. If anyone doesn't want to hear it, they can fast forward. Is or it something different? 
Not really. <laughs> well, no, don't bother them. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. So, yeah, that was the only um, bits of news I sort of went into today. There wasn't a lot that was really that interesting at all. I mean, you could really get talking about anything and speculating, but these are the real bits of news that have come out. I mean, there was other things like... Uh, I don't know, Ron Howard had a picture of him with Fandy Newton on the, on the set of Han Solo. And then oh, shock, and, Ron Howard puts a picture up. Right, and then you could have a conversation about, oh, well, what character do you think she's playing? But we don't know, you know, so... Is she playing a robot woman? Could be. Maybe they're, they're in, it's not actually um, Star Wars, it's Star Wars World. Yeah. Mm, I'd go there, wouldn't you? I would go there. If it was like if it was just like Westworld but Star Wars world, I would totally go there, man. Oh no. So so then that leads to the question, who would you kill, who would you shag and who would you marry in Star Wars? Well <laughs> <laughs> It would depend on what character I'm playing. I think I would be a bounty hunter of some sort. Shag, I would just have like a whole horde of Twilight slave girls. <laughs> right? <laughs> and marry um, well, I'd have to see who's around. I, I, I'd, I might go for, um, I don't know, I don't know, like, depends what era I'm in, man. Well, you can choose from any era. You just say which ones. In Star Wars world, it's got an amalgamation. You just go, walk yeah. around the corner. And, you're in, and then you're, you're, in, in the, you're in the prequels, and then and yeah. no one would go there. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I'd be a Jedi, and, and I'd be... I'll take Obi Wan out just before he cuts Anakin down. <laughs> yeah. I'd marry Ahsoka. Ahsoka, oh, no. but not she's when she's annoying. a kid. She's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit. Would I be a bounty hunter? Or would I be like a Sith Lord? You can be whatever you want in so, Star Wars. No? Would you get force powers? Like, if you were, if you went there as a player, would you be given force powers if you played that type of role? Like, you I think you'd have to. Uh, I think it'd be like one of those things, like you know, like the bloke, the black hat bloke that li ends up living in there, effectively. Yeah. In Westworld. Yeah. I think you'd have to keep it, that. So you'd have to keep coming back to be, to train to become one. They would oh, let you become yeah. one, either Jedi or Sith, but you would have to train. And it do it in real time. And isn't it like th forty thousand pounds a go? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm I, saying. I, I guess be, I would work. Be going <laughs> I guess I'd never go. Oh, I wish I could go there. <laughs> sell you my might house. Be rich one day. Just sell my house. And like, you might make you make my, all this podcast money that we get. Oh yeah, yeah. If we had um, Patreon, or, or something, you know, I'm waiting for Daryl to send our wages over. Yeah, he, he's not very good like that. <laughs> Can you imagine if we had like Patreon or something like that and like no one was giving us money? That would really suck. That would be so disheartening. Well, that's why we haven't got one, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> no one would give us money for this. <laughs> <laughs> to find out who you would shag in Star Wars. <laughs> I already said I'd have a whole horde of Twilight Slave girls. <laughs> Mine would be Snice Noodles. Snice Noodles. Yeah. <laughs> they can't see that. It's an audio. I know they can't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, look. Um, you didn't say who you kill. We, uh, who would I kill? Anyone that stands in my way. Okay. Anyone. I did say that if I was in the prequel era, I'd cut down Obi Wan before he takes out Anakin. I'll <laughs> 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 so, kill Anakin when he's a boy. Just be oh, so yeah. funny. You imagine, and it's like that's it. It's all over. You yeah. end it right there. <laughs> Jar Jar would die. No, I keep him alive. I'd, actually, I might marry him. I'd, yeah, I'd keep him alive because I'm a bounty hunter, right? So I'd keep him alive, but I'd keep him prisoner and just torture him mm. for for years. <laughs> You're a sicko, aren't you? I'm glad oh, yeah. that there isn't a real um, Star Wars world because you'd end up shutting it down. Oh yeah, I'd just like massacre everyone then. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe them out, all of them. Wipe them out. Yeah, the Emperor would be like, good, I like this one. <laughs> good. good. You want this, don't you? <laughs> That's, I'd be the Emperor, man. I'd just, I'd go up to him, take him out and just say, now I'm the Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd wear gold robes and but say, I'm a snake baby. There's nothing underneath. <laughs> 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 right, anyway, um, 
do you have anyway, anything that you want to add to listeners. this? I think the listeners should tell us who they would shag, marry and kill in Star Wars. That'd Definitely. Be nice. That's, we're going to put that out on our group, on the Star Wars Conversations group on Facebook. Um, so that would be the new poll, right? Yeah. Um, so have you got anything that you wanted to add this week? Or are we going to round it up, close down, and then go and play some video games? Um, the only thing I wanted to mention was I watched Star Wars show, not this week, last week. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, because I'm not... That- Thing and I was quite interested by the fact that they were talking about actually, I don't even know if it was a Star Wars show, it was on something I was watching, and they were saying that people had read the language on the holographic map. Oh, yeah, um, BB 8 and R2 look, put, oh, to, right. put up, yeah, yeah, and, and that they were saying actually, it was actually really close to all the other planets that we've been to, and it's actually in the inner rim, not in the outer rim. So, the, the um, galactic map that they've shown us is wrong. Yeah, well, either that or... Well, they just haven't shown at you in it, have they? Um, Was it not in one of those books? I'm sure it appears in one of the books. What, in your one that you got had a mistake in it, we told a bloke and he tweeted us. Yeah, (laughs) I forgot about that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Anyway, I can't remember. But No, I don't think they put at you in there, mate. Ah, at at Chito. I call him a chew. A chew? It's me sneeze. I'm allergic to porks. (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah anyway I just thought that was interesting that that actually sort of made it so it shows that it's actually right near Endor and Whack Bollocks mm. uh, uh, so again that adds to the theory that Luke's only been on there for two years yeah why well why because they would have found him otherwise It'd be yeah, there a long guess, time. yeah they'd have gone no you know he loved it on Endor let's go back that, around that way and see if he's nearby <laughs> <laughs> hanging out with he the likes little it's... annoying animals he does so. right now he's going to hang out with little fuzzy birds. He's hanging around with jewellers, then he hangs around with Ewoks, and now he hangs around with porks. Yeah. He's all about the little creatures, that Luke. Yeah. Something yeah. going on there. <laughs> Sicko. Right, okay, I think that we're going to end it here then. So, people can find us in a whole bunch of different places. One of those places is on our the place where it all started, our Facebook group called Star Wars Conversations. Um, we're also on Twitter at Star Wars Conversations or at Star Wars Convo. That's right. Yeah, at Star yeah. Wars Convo or use the hashtag Star Wars Convo. We're on Stitcher. We're on SoundCloud. We're on iTunes. And you know what? Some five star reviews on iTunes would really help us out. Um, if you like the show, please, please do subscribe to us and uh, give us some reviews on there. Um, you know, because everything that you guys do can help us in some way, I guess. Um, and uh, we're also on the Taylor Network of Podcasts. Tell them about it, Colin. Uh, Taylor Network of Podcasts. It's an amazing place. It's a website. It's a Facebook group. But more importantly, it's a podcast feed, which you can get on SoundCloud. Oh, no, you can't. You can get it on uh, Google Play and Stitcher and iTunes and anywhere that your podcatcher can catch them. Uh, and it's got a mixture, loads of different podcasts, uh, a lot of them around comics and culture and pop culture and geeky stuff. Um, go Trek Yourself, um, obviously our brilliant one, double page spread, uh, no apologies, nothing's on, all those great podcasts. So uh, check that out um, and say hello to them and listen to some of those other bad boys. Yeah. Um, and you can find us on Twitter. You can find Colin at Captain Colin, and I'm at Eagle Eye nineteen thirty three. So that's it for this week. Well, it's not because I just remember something else I want to ah, talk about. Always wait till I get to the end. Go on. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that I went to Coventry Comic Con uh, on Sunday. Just mm-hmm. gone. How was it? It was all right. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, for a first first event, it was very good. I thought. Um, a lot, of, a lot of people turned out. A lot of good uh, artists. I've got some nice sketches. A um, few guests and stuff. Um, but I guess the main bit was uh, there were a few guests from Star Wars. Uh, and the main one being David Prowse. Um, so I did get to meet him again, say hello to him. Uh, I didn't interview him like I was going to, because to be fair, he was a bit poorly. You could tell oh. he wasn't particularly well. Um, that's not good I too. think he definitely uh, I think there's definitely a strong reason why he's retiring I, you know he, he, he was in good spirit but I, you could tell he wasn't really 
full on. So and it was also um, it being a you know a new con and that hadn't really worked out a few bits and it probably wasn't going to be the best environment to try and talk to somebody either because it was really crowded in that bit where he was. So but I did meet him and I thanked him on behalf of us and the Star Wars conversation listeners awesome. for everything he's done uh, and wished him well in his retirement. So. Uh, and I also got my photograph I've had with him done previously, autographed, so that was really nice. Cool. Um, there was also um, a few other guys, David Stone, Hugh, someone, um, a couple of other people that have played like Gamma Ring Guards, um, Dak, whatever the name is. Dak, um, Dak! And the fella that had that one line about... Um, some fighters against the Imperial thing, or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they were there, but I didn't talk to them because oh. I was, wasn't really in the mood for it, really. I wasn't yeah. in the mood for talking to people that I don't know. So I did spend a lot of time talking to some <laughs> wicked artists that I was hanging around with, so that was cool. But cool. Um, well. So anyway, I just thought I'd give a little update on that. Uh, it was good fun. Thank you, Jeff, for getting me a ticket. Awesome. And... Um, also, really looking forward to SW40, which is on the 9th of December in Coventry. Yes, that'll be good. And uh, hopefully we'll try and talk to some people there. Yes, we will at that one. I, I tell you what, I needed my old pal Jay there. Spare me on. Are we going to wear our T-shirts with Souls Conversations on it? Yeah, and cardboard costumes. I was wearing my Obi-Wan costume, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that went down well. Was it well, I didn't actually. No, no one knew who I was. Uh, there was a lot of casual sci-fi fans at that con who right. just didn't seem to know much. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. They're like, why are you dressed like an old wizard? I'm like, a crazy old I like, wizard. Yeah, crazy old man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of people who just said, I really like your costume, but who are you? I'm like, oh. But the people that I talked to that I cared about knew who I was, so that's all that matters. Did you when you addressed as uh, cardboard Obi Wan? Do you talk like Obi Wan? No, because That's I can't do the voice know. like you can. <laughs> That's why they didn't know who you were. <laughs> uh, move along, little one. <laughs> right. So, is that it then? Are we done? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, until next time. Punch it, Chewie. May the force be with you. Yeah.